What's up viewers and welcome to another episode of Cheers Reviews. I'm your host Jimmy and today we're having a bit of a fun episode and we're going to look at five bases from the yesteryear that should be brought back. There's been so many times where I've gone to a shop to look at a base or at least try one out to find out that they're not made anymore. This happened about a year or two ago when I was looking for an Epiphone Embassy base but they weren't available. Our fellow YouTuber Johnny Dibble did an episode on the Epiphone Embassy and guess what? Epiphone listened and they brought it back which is so great for people like you and I who are keen to get some vintage tones. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Stick with me and let's get into it. Number one, Fender Music Master Bass. Yes, the Fender Music Master Bass. Have you heard of it? Maybe not. That's because it was only built for 10 years in small numbers between 1971 and 1981 out of their factory in the USA. Targeted as a budget-friendly bass, this was actually made from surplus parts from their factory. So the body comes from a Mustang bass and the pickup is actually a guitar pickup. So it's got six poles on it rather than the classic four poles that you'd usually get on a bass pickup. Similar to the Mustang, this comes in as a short scale at 30 inches. Although this sounds like a recipe to save a few dollars, this bass resonates with so many different musicians like Kim Gordon from Sonic Youth. I'd absolutely love to play one of these to get those straight up gnarly tones. Although the Squire Bronco is fairly similar, I'd love to see Fender reintroduce the Music Master bass or even adopt it into the Squire Classic Vibe range. I think that'd be awesome. Number two, Gibson Grabber. Quite possibly one of the heftiest bases on this list is the Gibson Grabber, which was only available between 1973 and 1983. The Gibson Grabber is known for its symmetrical shape and hefty tone, which is partly due to the adjustable pickup. That's right, you could adjust the pickup to slide between the neck and the bridge or anywhere in between. In 2009, we did see a small number of Gibson Grabber reissue bases 350 to be exact, which was snapped up super quickly. To provide a bit of context, Gibson sold 2,637 Gibson Grabber bases in 1975. That is huge. Loved by many bassists like Gene Simmons from Kiss, Mike Dern from Green Day, and Lewis Johnson. It would be awesome if Gibson was to bring this back into their regular lineup, because I feel like there's a massive desire to have readily available beefy vintage tones. And have a look at these things, they look awesome. Number three, Vantage V600B. I remember when I bought my first bass exercise book, this is what was on the front cover. The Vantage V600B bass was a simple, punchy, easy to use bass full of mojo. These came out of the Matsumoku factory in Japan, and you'd know with confidence that these were built with absolute precision. This was the same factory that produced guitars and basses for Epiphone, Ibanez, Aria, and more. As time went on, some of these brands decided to take their production to more cost-effective countries at the time, such as Korea and China. So Matsumoku decided to self-market their own brand Vantage. I've never actually played one of these as they are quite rare, especially in Australia, but I've always loved the look of them, especially those wacky variants that have got the two split coil pickups. After a long period of the Matsumoku factory changing ownership and changing hands, the eventual successor for Matsumoku and the Vantage brand was Aria, also known as Aria Pro 2, which you can still buy top quality models out of the factory in Japan. It'd be so cool if Aria Pro 2 were to bring back the Vantage nameplate and the V600B bass. I know I'd totally get one. Number four, PVT40 bass. Also known as the poor man's Rickenbacker, the PVT40 bass is a beefy, hefty, mojo-filled beast. Made in the PV factory in the USA, the T40 bass was one of the first basses that PV had ever made. And although they're known for being super heavy, they're also praised for their tank-like structure and durability. Sporting two humbuckers with four control dials, you can get a heap of different sounds out of the pickup arrangement, and you can still hear 
the PV T40 in modern music today. I mean, check out Anton Dang from Oh Brother. It just looks so cool. It was a little bit disheartening to see on PV's website that they only make one type of bass, which is the Milestone series bass, which is out of their factory in China. And even then, I'm not quite sure if they're still making them because I haven't seen a new one available for a really long time. Anyway, the point of that is that there's a huge gap in PV's lineup for an awesome bass and I think the T40 would be an awesome introduction to their lineup. And as mentioned earlier, they are known for being tough, affordable, full of mojo, and I know the PV can come through with the goods. Number five, Fender Dimension Bass. Yes, we are at the end of the list and we are ending on an absolute banger the Fender Dimension Bass. If you've been following the channel, you would have seen my review on the Fender Dimension Bass. I borrowed it off a friend and I absolutely fell in love with it. Standing up tall against his humbucking rivals like the Music Man Stingray Bass, the Fender Dimension Bass was a truly unique character and filled a big gap in the Fender and Squire lineup. That's right, they were available in Fender USA all the way to Squire Affinity. I still can't understand why they got rid of it. Available in four and five strings, the Fender Dimension Bass packed a huge punch with one or two humbuckers, a three band active EQ on board, and in a band setting, it had the versatility and ability to jump through different genres as you please. Overall, I thought they looked awesome. It'd be so great to see Fender or Squire bring this back into their lineup I'd absolutely love to see Squire bring the Dimension Bass into their Paranormal series because I know it's a little bit different and a little bit wacky and I'd definitely jump on one if that was available. So in summary, my top five basses that should be brought back is the Fender Music Master Bass because of its straight up gnarly tones, the Gibson Grabber for its beefiness and adjustable pickup, the Vantage V600B because it's the master of mojo, the PVT40 bass because of its beefiness and durability, and finally the Fender Dimension bass because of its punchy, versatile tones. And there you have it folks, that was a quick top five basses that should be brought back. If you like today's video, please give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see weekly bass related content, go ahead and smash that subscribe button down below. But until next week, Keep on rocking, and I'll see you next time.